have finished the little lemon slices that are going to be floating inside of the vinyl and I let them dry overnight. Today is a new day. So yesterday we did the lemons and today I'm going to do the lemonade pitcher and that is on page 27 of the book. And I'm going to do it on the multi-needle to give you guys uh, who have multi-needles an opportunity to play with your machine a little bit. So what's the difference between a single needle and a multi-needle other than 10 needles? On a single needle, you have to tell the design to stop in certain places. And the digitizer does that. It, by, it, they tell the machine when to stop by changing the thread color. That's why even though the edge of this lemon slice is only yellow, if you look at the design in the machine or maybe you dragged it into your software, into Embrilliance, you'll see lots of different colors that have nothing to do with yellow. And the reason for that is because the digitizer just picked an arbitrary color. I'm going to make that red. I'm going to make that black. I'm going to make that green. And they do that so that the machine knows it needs to stop to allow you to change the thread color. When you're doing applique, you don't necessarily need to change a thread color, but the machine needs to stop so that you can do something. Maybe you need to put your fabric down on top of a placement line or you need to trim around your applique fabric before the final stitch is done. The digitizer does that by changing the thread color. So the machine knows I need to stop so that you can change the thread color. Whether you actually change the thread color or not is neither here nor there, but that's what the machine thinks that you're doing. Now on a multi-needle, the multi-needle is designed almost on a commercial scale and what the multi-needle does, it, it is designed to jump from color to color to color to color with no intervention from you at all. And that's all well and good until you're trying to do an in the hoop project or applique or something like that where you do need the machine to stop. And you want to be strategic on where you tell the machine to stop. I know some people just say, well, I stop it at every color and that way I make sure. And if that makes you comfortable, that's great. So there's more pre-planning that's done on a multi-needle than on a single needle. On a single needle, the machine stops and says, here, you need, some, you need to do something. And you know that, that something needs to be done and you take care of it and then you hit go and off you go again until the machine thinks it has a color change and then it stops again. The idea behind a multi-needle is to set all of that up ahead of time. You front end all the thought process of, I'm going to run this stitch color and then I need it to stop so that I can put down my fabric over the placement line and then it's going to run probably the same color, but I need it to stop again so that I can trim that fabric around if you're not using pre-cut fabric pieces. And then you need to tell it when to switch colors. I wouldn't be confused with the first stitch is always color number one and the second stitch is always color number two and the third stitch is always color number three. That's not the case at all. The first, the second, and the third may all be the same color, which is fine, but you might have to program in a stop. And the stop looks like a hand on the brother and baby lock machines. It looks like a little hand, somebody going, stop, like police man. <laughs> I'm gonna go through that with this because there's a lot of applique steps in here and show you my thought process of how I go through and do this. It's not fast, it's not pretty, okay? <laughs> And, and whether you have a single needle or a multi needle, I think sometimes the hardest thing is picking out the thread colors and getting that all set up. I definitely use the method of tying off in the back and then reaching in front of the needle and pulling the thread through and then allow the machine to thread the needle itself. On my machine, and every one is different depending on how you set it up. The multi-needles have the ability to lock in thread colors on certain color numbers. I do have three thread colors permanently marked in my multi-needle. 
Number five is black, number six is white, and number seven is red. And the reason I did those three colors to be permanently those three spools, to be permanently those colors is because they're in the center in the back where you know you've got that big tray with all your thread colors right and those three in the back are hardest to get to so those are the ones i want to change the least it's much easier to change the ones that are out on the end because i can just reach there on the sides and get them that's just me you guys can do whatever you want to of course but that uh, that's just easiest for me to to do it to cut my stabilizer and measure it out, I don't really take any measurements. I just lay my stabilizer, you know, from the roll on my cutting table, and I just put my hoop on it, make sure I've got plenty around all the sides, and do a cut. That's it. So pretty simple for that. I don't get all hung up on measurements with that thing. And now what they want you to do is to take your stabilizer, and I'm gonna take my nine by nine square and center it on the stabilizer. You just wanna make sure you've got plenty along the top, on both sides, and it doesn't have to be a whole lot, because don't, don't forget, we're gonna fussy cut this and cut it down to six and a half. So I'm going to tape it at the top and tape it at the bottom. All right. And then for my multi-needle hoop, I'm gonna lay this just like this. And then put this in there. There, that's good. I'm gonna use my little brother screwdriver to tighten this up. You guys, the older I get, my hands, this is the handiest little thing. It came with my Luminaire. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. That's a good hooping. And you can recess it just a tiny bit if you want, just a tiny bit. That's a good hooping. Okay, so this is good. We are ready to go over to the multi-needle. And I'm going to start from zero and show you how this is done. This is the Brother Entrepreneur Pro X. And it is the new PR1055X. And I have the quilting table attached to it. I just like to leave it on there. It's, it's easier to just leave this B. And this is the A frame that is on here. There is a B frame and it's down below. You don't use that a whole lot or I haven't anyway right now. And the two colors that are used in this particular design to stitch the Life is Sweet, which is the lemonade pitcher. That's this one right here and the two colors that it uses throughout all of this you can tell by the book is yellow 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 white 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 so just yellow and white are only two colors that are used and I have yellow on here already and then as I said earlier white is permanently number six so I don't have to do any kind of color changes or anything which is very handy the frame that's on here right now, I have it set for the large uh, frame that does the, I think it's eight and a half by 12. I need to make it a little bit smaller so that the five by seven hoop will fit. You only really need to mess with the screws that are over here in the back. There's a big one here and a smaller one in the middle. Let me get the camera so you can see. So there's a big screw right here and a smaller screw right here. And you need to loosen them both you don't need to take them out, just loosen them. And then what I do is kind of place the end of that, that end of the hoop over there, and then I just shove this. And it, you can hear it kind of clicks right there, right there. And that's where it needs to be for the five by seven hoop. If you miss it, just go back, no big deal. And then now it should fit in and it doesn't matter which way on the multi needle it can go this way or it can go this way so you need to figure out where front is so i'm just going to slip this in here and push it in you'll hear it click and you want it to click two times and make sure you get it hooked in on both sides just like that that was easy enough okay so now we need to tell the machine what to do and we need to do all of that up front 
I have a handy dandy little Power Tools with Thread Go Sew Something USB stick. We have these in white and black and pink with white. And I have a USB extender over here on the side of my machine and not necessary but it, it this provides less wear and tear on the USB port on the computer. So I'm going to just pop this in here and then I need to retrieve the design. I'm going to get the design from the USB stick so I'm going to touch the universal symbol for USB and then I'm going to look for the picture. There it is. Life is sweet. Pops it up right there and I'm going to hit set. One of the nice things that are about the Kimberbell designs is that you don't have to do any kind of editing at all. You can just pop it in and go. So I'm going to hit edit end and it says change to a larger embroidery or frame. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to change the frame. I'm going to hit rotate. See it made a liar out of me. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and you can rotate it 90 degrees either way. I like to rotate mine so that the head is always to the left. That's how I remember. I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to write front on this stabilizer right here so I don't forget which way is which. So now I've turned it 90 degrees to my left. I'm going to tell it OK and edit end now. Perfect. How about that? and see these three thread spool. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. This is how I do it. You know, if you have a way that works for you, you go right ahead. So I'm going to hit the three thread spools and now we're on number one and it, it lists one through six. All right. So number one, I want to be spool number three. And so it gives you the choices. So one through five and six through 10. And you can see these little anchors on here. That means five is always black, six is always white, and seven is always red. And these are the hands that are set for the stops. So number one is the placement line for the, for the fabric. And I want that to be spool number three, because that's yellow. And see, even though the colors here don't change, I don't care about that. I know number three is yellow and that's good. Now I want it to stop before it does the next stitch because I need to put my fabric down. So number one, and you can see it in the book, it says number one, stitch the lemonade placement line. Place lemonade fabric right side up. So we're going to go to number two and before number two stitches out, and you can see right here in the picture what's going to happen. Before number two stitches out, I'm going to put my hand. It needs to stop. And then number two will also be spool number three. And then Kimberbell has already put in the hand to stop before. So we'll trim the fabric and then it's going to stitch number three is the lemonade decorative stitch, the outline. Now we're going to stitch the pitcher placement line and number four and I want that to be white. So white is always number six and then it's going to do the tack down. I want it to stop before it does the tack down. So I'm going to tell it stop. See if it was me, I would put the hand over here because I read it from this way to this way, but that's not how it's programmed. So <laughs> I also want that to be white number six and then I need to trim it before you can tell which number you're on that goes with the book right here so after number five and before number six I need it to stop again so number one if I go back here stitch number one is the placement line for the yellow fabric stitch number two I need it to stop and I want that to be color number three. Stitch number three, I need it to stop and that will also be color number three. Stitch number four, I don't need it to stop, so that's fine, I need that to be color number six. Stitch number five, I need it to stop and then it'll stitch color number six. And stitch number six, I need it to stop so I can trim away the vinyl and then it will do the final stitching. Okay, that's perfect. I'm gonna tell it okay. 
and I'm going to touch embroidery and it's all ready to go. So that's kind of the process I go through. So here you can see how it is all programmed and it's ready to go. Okay, just to show you real quick, I have the Brother My Stitch Monitor on my phone. And it says no embroidery data and it says it's connected. I'm going to touch the settings key up here, the little wheel. And it says machine selection. Now Darla's connected to it too, so I'm going to touch on Darla. And it's going to find, it's kind of looking, oh, there's Spanky. That's who we want this time. So now Spanky, now you can see, see the life is sweet. There's the yellow picture and all that. This is awesome. It tells me it's going to take one minute and then there's a stop after that. And the whole design is supposed to take about 11 minutes, but it's ready to go. So I'm just going to hit the lock button. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on. I'm going to double check that I have plenty of bobbin. This machine likes a single drop of oil at the beginning of every day. So I'm going to put that in here right by where Jason told me to put it. You've got to take care of your machines or they get very fussy. So the idea is it's just going to do its thing and stop whenever it needs to. my fabric down and then you hit lock again and it'll go now I need to trim away the yellow fabric And having this table is so nice. I already have a nice flat surface like I like to use. And I'm going to put this back in. Now don't forget, I got to find the front. You don't want to do that upside down. Wiggle it, make sure it's in tight and we're ready to go. Now there's not a stop before the next stitch, so it's going to go ahead and do the placement line for the vinyl. I'm going to trim this down so you guys can see better. Okay, now we need to put my phone just made a little beep beep. What is that? Paused. So we need to pause. It's, it's pausing so I can put down my lemons. They don't want you to tape them. They want them to float freely inside of the pitcher. Now we need to put the vinyl on and you want to make sure you don't have any thread under it or anything like that. So it did a pause automatically and the, my stitch monitor said, hey, you need to go do something. Put this over just like that okay now we need to cut away the vinyl you want to use your scissors just like you do when you're cutting regular applique try not to cut the thread fibers I'm gonna angle usually I don't like to angle but I'm gonna angle just a little bit out this says trim picture as desired. I will go ahead and cut this out when we get finished. But now, let me make sure I have my front up front. I'll pop this back in. And it is going to finish stitching out Life is Sweet up along the top. Okay, it's all finished. I'm going to tell it okay so the light quits blinking. And pop it out. Oh, that turned out so cute. Gosh, that turned out good. Look at that. <laughs> Let's go trim it. Okay, it is time to trim. I have one of my favorite, favorite things. This is a set of Kimberbell Orange Pop Rulers. 
I'm going to take this out and the first thing I do when it's time to cut anything is to get rid of my nice blue silicone mat just so I don't accidentally cut it. They want you to trim the block to six and a half by six and a half and when you do that if you have a rotary mat it will make your life a lot easier, a lot easier. That way you don't have to pick it up and move it. So they want you to use a six and a half by six and a half. And the cool thing about these orange pop rulers is they nest inside like this. They come with some little discs that you can peel off and put on the back of the rulers and that keeps them from skidding around, which is pretty cool. So let's see, I need the six and a half by six and a half. And that is going to be the middle one here yep six and a half by six and a half this little one squares to four and a half and this one squares to eight and a half I'm just making sure you can certainly put marks on your fabric before you get started but I'm just making sure that the little arrows that are on here are like centered in the middle of the picture this looks really good these rulers have right here little grooves in them right here in the corners so that you can get your rotary cutter up in there and if you want you can actually nest them and that gives you a little bit more room to put your hands so that's even better start back here in this slice and just very carefully slice up and turn If you're left-handed, you probably want to do it over here. These are handy. All right. Let's see how we did. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Pretty cool. I <laughs> love it. Okay, so we have our perfect Life is Sweet block. There's a little jump stitch right here and I want to cut away this plastic. So this turned out super cute and it was a lot of fun and it's really easy to do on the multi-needle. All right, you guys, this has been a long video. Appreciate you sticking with me. I hope you give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to visit some more, please subscribe. We will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.